Welcome back. In this lecture, part of the lecture, we'll be looking at a geometric interpretation of vectors. Now, this works best when n is equal to 2 or n equals 3 because we can visualize r2 or r3. Now, you might be familiar with r2 and r3 from your calculus class. Normally, you view r2 as the plane. Now, normally when you talk about points on the plane, you're using the Cartesian system, where, for example, you would write your points as A, B. So what we're going to do is we're going to identify a vector in R2. So remember, that's a column. And in R2, it would have two rows. So we're going to identify the vector A, B with the point A, B in the Cartesian plane. And to kind of highlight the fact that it's a vector, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a directed arrow from the origin to the point A, A. So let me make this a bit more explicit through an example. Let's say I were to draw my Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, there's my y-axis and there is my x-axis. So let's call this my y, my x. And I say I was looking at the point uh, or the vector 3, 2. Now, how could I visualize this? Well, normally there would be 1, 2, and 3, right? 1, 2, 3, and this would be 1 and 2. So we're going to identify this vector with the point 3, 2 in the plane. And to highlight the fact that we have a vector, we're going to draw a line from the origin to the point 3, 2, and we put a little arrow on there to keep track of the fact that we're dealing with a vector. Now, we saw that we have some operations on our vector. We had vector addition and we had scalar multiplication. And these, both of these operations have a geometric interpretation. So what is the sum of two vectors? Well, the sum of two vectors is going to be the fourth vertex of the parallelogram whose other vertices are the origin and the vector, the endpoint of the vector u and the endpoint of the vector v. So again, let's draw some pictures so you can see what's going on here. There's my y-axis. I'll draw my x-axis now. And let's say I'm looking at two vectors. I have my vector u and I have my vector v. Now we learned how to add these two vectors together. We would take each of their components, each particular entry in the vector and add them together. But what would that mean geometrically? Well, what we're going to do is form the parallelogram. So that's the four-sided figure where the opposite sides are parallel. And we look at the point of intersection. So think about taking this line, moving it up, and then we have a parallel line here. Or we can take this line over here and uh, move it along here, keeping it parallel. So we get this other point of our parallelogram. And the vector u plus v is going to be the fourth vertex of this parallelogram. So that's how we can visualize what the sum of two vectors is in the plane. Similarly, when we look at scalar multiplication, there's a geometric interpretation as well. In this case, scalar multiplication corresponds to stretching a vector, okay, through the line, uh, through the, the stretching a vector from the origin to the point, and stretching that line in either stretching it further out or further in. Okay, so let's make this a little bit clearer with an example. Let's say I start with my vector u is going to be the vector 2, 1. So that would be somewhere right around here. And now, so that let me label that. There is my vector 2, 1. And now let's say I were to look at the vector 3 times u. Well, that's going to be 6, 3. Now, if I were to plot 6, 3, you'll notice that it will be on the same line uh, that goes from the origin to the vector 2, 1. Oops, didn't mean to do that. 
that. So right here, and I'll do this in orange so we can see a little bit better. This is going to be the vector 3u. One thing to pay attention to is if we were to multiply by a negative number, what that does is it would swing the vector into the opposite direction, but it would still be on the same line. Okay, so let me make this clear so that we have the same line through here. And I could have maybe, this vector right here, and this could possibly be minus one, two, one. So scalar multiplication takes the vector and stretches it upwards uh, along the same line, or it may switch it around in the opposite direction if we multiply by a negative number. Now it's, it's easy to see that both of these ideas of uh, vector addition and scalar multiplication would work also in R3. In that case, we would take a vector which now has three components and we would identify it with the corresponding point in R3. And actually the, this idea generalizes to Rn. The problem is it becomes extremely hard to draw, partly because it's really hard to visualize for uh, four space, five space, and so on. But you can kind of see what is happening is that we would be taking a vector u, okay, and a vector u now because it's a vector in Rn would have would have n different entries, and we could think of that as corresponding to the point u1 through R un in Rn, and this vector would correspond to a directed arrow from the origin to this particular point. So the takeaway here is that even though we, we have this notion of vectors, which seems very kind of algebraic, in certain cases, especially in R2 and R2 as in here, or in R3, which I haven't drawn any examples today, we have also some geometric meaning as well. And sometimes this geometric information can give us some intuition about what's happening with respect to vectors. In the next part, of this lecture, we're going to talk about linear combinations.